Bassan was a British socialist, theosophist, women's rights activist, writer, orator, educationalist, and philanthropist. Throughout her life, Annie has achieved many things and helped many people. Known as a champion of human freedom and a supporter of both Irish and Indian self-rule. As a writer, Annie has over 300 books and pamphlets to her name. Meet Bob Forder. He's a retired history teacher and a member of the National Secular Society. Bob has agreed to come along and talk to us about Annie Besant, who was a member of the society herself back in the 1800s. Who was Annie Besant? Annie Besant, well, she was born in 1847. Mm -hmm. She was, had quite a middle class background. She had a pretty good private education. There really was not a lot of alternative to a private education in those days. Annie, Annie was a restless personality. Mm -hmm. She was always changing her mind about things. And for 15 years or so, she'd been an ardent radical, yeah. a follower of Bradlaugh. But by about 1885, she, like many other radicals, were beginning to change their minds about things. And what they were beginning to change their mind about was that they were very much conscious of the new idea that was developing in England at that time, which was socialism. And by 1885, she was beginning to refer to herself as a socialist. In 1888, and very importantly, she became involved in a dispute which is generally known as the Match Girls Strike, which took place in East London at the Bryant May factory. For the Bryant May, they make matches. Well, the job of making matches in those days was a pretty dangerous one. Mm. Not from so much from the danger you might think of, you know, things Setting burning alert, yeah. or going alight, but by the by the process that young women had to carry out. And a lot of the girls suffered from a disease which was commonly known as fuzzy jaw because they would get sulfur on their hands. They had no proper canteen facilities at Bryant May. Uh, they would eat their sandwiches and eventually some of the sulfur would get into their mouths from their hands. This literally rotted their jaws. It was a terrible, disfiguring illness which killed you. And as soon as your employer at Brian May noticed that you had an inflamed jaw or anything wrong with it, you got the sack because they didn't want to be accused of providing unhealthy conditions in which women worked. Now, Annie Bissant got to hear about this and in 1888, a number of the girls at Bryant and May decided they'd had enough of this and they went on strike mm. and Annie joined them and many people argue that she provided them with some of the ideas that they needed to do and contacts with politicians and eventually they won their dispute which meant um, they got better wages and rather better conditions to work in including a business in the canteen, which I mentioned to you earlier. Let me just finish with Annie. Yep. By 1890, Annie was changing her mind again. Mm -hmm. This time, horror of horrors, in a much worse direction, as far as her old allies were concerned, she came influenced by Eastern religion, mm -hmm. a, particularly, a particular branch of Eastern religion, which became known as Theosophy and um, Annie began to give up on her own old free thought ideas. She began to give up on many of the things she campaigned for and eventually in the early 1890s she moved to India oh. where she spent the rest of her life. She didn't die till I think it was 1933 she died. So she lived on a fair old while after yeah, this. Quite, quite a long time. Yeah. She became, you know, something of an important figure in the movement for Indian 
independence. Bob gave us a real insight into Annie's life. So what we decided to do next was hit the streets and ask public some questions and hear their thoughts on Annie Poussaint. Women who have done significant things for society. We have women who have like strived to make like laws for women in place like, you know, voting and owning their own property without husbands. I'd just say literally any woman who's like a single mother and has like a kid or two and is just doing working full time doing everything by herself. Margaret Thatcher for me. Margaret Thatcher. All oh, independent women, people that uh, follow their own minds. I would think of Michelle Obama, I think of Theresa May, Margaret Thatcher, Amelia Earhart. Uh, Suffragettes, <laughs> obviously. Like, suffragettes were pretty good with like, all their protests to, um, to strive for women's rights, but, um, you know, they did, pre they did some pretty good things on women's rights. The woman behind the throne. They were um, <laughs> working yeah. behind the scenes. I'm watching The Crown, the crown on Netflix now, so I can't help thinking about Queen Elizabeth. I think about the uh, struggle to get a vote. Uh, I think when it came to like the suffragette movements and stuff like that, you know, fighting for women's rights, um, yeah, so that's about as much as I know. It's more difficult then because of the patriarchal society that existed at the time, you know, very low literacy rates amongst women. Any woman basically who stuck her head above the parapet pre First World War, after the First World War, you had a lot more recognition amongst the public about the value of strong women. But I think it just shows the progress we've made that when we talk about modern times, there's endless examples. No, not at all. <laughs> no, I don't. Basically, she was in like late, late 1800s, early 1900s, and she fought for women's rights in the workplace. Oh, okay. um, she was like very um, like on her own, so she like left her religion um, to on new religions and like this whole like, spirituality thing, um, and she like taught a lot about contraceptives. Well, if she did, if she advocated for like um, contraceptives, and that's you know that's pretty good because I don't think a lot of women were really like they had rights for contraceptives back then. So the fact that she taught people about them made them a lot more educated. That's a really good thing. Well, somebody needs to start something like that. Yeah. So she was a trailblazer. <laughs> I think otherwise, you know, we would have still probably had the debate today, which is, exactly. which is now do. long gone. And, <laughs> and hopefully women feel they have the rights and, and the freedom to, to make choices. Well, Why a lot? I mean, if she's if she, the on one who, own. yeah. On her own, yeah. she's able to do all of that, like show, show that you can continuously explore and actually show off that you're really independent in everything you do. It shows that everyone can do that if they choose to. And especially when with the whole contraception part of the showing that off to everyone and actually being able to promote and show and educate everyone about contraceptives, it actually really helps with today. It's very important right now, not going to lie, with you know, everything that's happening. I think we'd hold a very, very powerful position in society and we'd hope would exercise that power with a bit more compassion. I think that's one of the things we hope that with an increased percentage of female representation in politics and business, we might have a more equitable society because of the different qualities people bring to the table. So I think she did very well. Thank you. 